guys, welcome to Harvesting Strength. Right here we got Leo, okay? We're doing a mock meet, kind of a backstory behind this. We were supposed to have a meet, but uh, some things got in the way, kind of uh, caused us to have to change our schedule, but we didn't want to mess up the peak. We didn't want to train leading up to that and then just kind of, you know, let things die out and, you know, start fresh. So we definitely wanted to take this opportunity to make sure and assess his movement, get a chance to see him performing with heavier weights and with the pressure put on him. And it also helped to kind of make sure that programming up to nationals, which is going to be here June 4th, we uh, are very aware of, you know, things about his performance to make sure we do proper exercise selection and get things right on point. So eight weeks is a short time, so we've got to make sure we make, it, uh, make the most of it. But right here, we're watching Leo unrack 495. Um, I think he did a great job with his squats today. And one thing you'll notice is right here, he likes to kind of almost free fall. And although it's kind of scary, it does uh, change when the weights get a little bit heavier. And uh, one thing I noticed is when Leo performs the squat, he does have this little uh, internal knee shift and causes him to displace the weight differently on his hips and just, you know, really puts him in a, a situation where he could be more successful. So. We really want to target those hip abductors and, you know, try to do some things to, you know, put him in a better advantage. And one of the things we talked about was his foot placement. He likes to squat narrow. I'm totally cool with that. I think, you know, there's, uh, you know, some various rigor to narrow versus wider squatting. But as you can tell, he does a very good job with the squat. And although it does seem like the squat lasts a short amount of time, he does a great job, um, you know, staying with it and promoting that biomechanical advantage, you know, having the right frame for being a squatter. But right here when the weights get heavy, you'll see those knees start to buckle inward. And that was something he had an issue with before. Notice that he got 535, got 565, uh, you know, a little bit of the way up. And at his last meet um, a few months ago, he only got 507. So he's shown a lot of growth and he's done a really good job uh, being a better competitor because of it. So right here, we're warming up for the bench press. Again, I do think he has a great structure and a great frame to not just promote the squat, but the bench and deadlift as well. And, you know, it continues to show in his performance. He's a 165 pound lifter. And right here, he smokes 300 and does a very good job. He kind of jumps the up command and you'll, you'll see us here in a minute, just kind of talk through it and discuss that, hey, you got to hold that pause a little bit longer. Want to make sure, um, you know, you're able to compete with this weight. We don't want to train short pauses and then you go to the meet and then you end up being with the guy who tends to count two to three seconds in the pause versus being, you know, a really good official and only watching for a motionless bar instead. But, um, you know, all that aside, he has done a great job. And one of the things we continue to work on was, you know, various grip, uh, tucking in his elbows, working that descending motion, being more tense and just sticking with it and just being as powerful off the chest as possible. I think on that one, his elbows flared out just quite a bit more than we'd want to. And if you are a lifter, you can definitely go with this idea that when your elbows flare out, the bar starts to, starts to slide towards your face and it really messes up the bar path. So again, that puts us in a position to where we can't be successful, but we're gonna get better. And he kind of let me know near the end of the lifting session today that uh, he had a long day at work. He actually does lumbar work. So you can kind of see based off his, uh, you know, his little farmer's tan that he does put in the hard work and Understand too that, you know, with that physical type of labor, it's really going to be, you know, a tough thing to rebound on these movements, having, you know, previously exhausted the body throughout the week from, you know, being involved in work. But he's resilient, he's mentally strong, and he doesn't allow that to get in the way and make excuses for his performance. So, one thing that Leo does a great job with is he is just super explosive. He just really comes at it and attacks the weight. You can see from this, his toes do point out quite a bit. So I think one of the things that's happened over time is I do believe he hasn't really had to necessarily work on his uh, hip abductors because in this position, it really gets him in a better position to uh, you know eliminate that issue. But I do think with the squats, we're gonna work on opening, opening those toes up and getting after it and maybe helping him out in that situation. But uh, right here, he commits the 560, gets a good pull off the ground and just 
rarely works to have a good clean lockout. Um, in training, he has hit 585 and done really well. And I think just by now, having had that long week and just going through all these movements for three hours straight, it's just exhausted him. But, you know, there's no excuse. He's going to get better and he gets 590 off the ground. And uh, I really do believe that here in a few weeks, once he's rested, gets a better uh, situation at work going and you know, we can dial in on the eight weeks. He can pull 600 and be a raw junior, 23-year-old, uh, 165 champion. So I'm excited to see what comes from here and excited for you guys to see too.